welcome again to my show, Searching for Tegr Integrity. My name really is John Smith, and I'm searching for people with integrity. Why? Because our country suffers from IDD, Integrity Deficit Disorder. Today, we have Gretchen Wollert, who is the author of Born to Fight, Lincoln and Trump. Are you there? I'm here. Very good. Southeast, Gretchen. Southeast Wyoming is where we are. Yes, you said somewhere along the southeast part of that, I believe. Mm -hmm. How far away from 25 going down into Colorado? Uh, I-25 is probably about 40 miles west of us. Uh -huh. So okay. we are, we're maybe 10 minutes from the Nebraska line. So the Nebraska panhandle uh -huh. is really close. I see. Okay. So it's actually called the banana belt of Wyoming. <laughs> really? <laughs> it is. What's... It is. So a lot of farm ground, <laughs> very mild here. Uh, about 80 miles north of Cheyenne, which is very close to the Colorado line. Uh huh. Well, I'm I'm ready to jump into this um, in, in terms of your book and and what you think about your book. And uh, it's uh, it's a lot of a uh, lot of research you certainly have got behind you. I don't know if you're still trying to do that. Right? Are you still researching? One way. Uh, or another? Well different things, not about this. I, I think I almost, almost exhausted my research. Uh, three years of research that I put into learning everything I possibly could that I didn't know about Abraham Lincoln and Donald Trump. And then a year to write the book. So four years altogether. Um, and yes, I have a lot of research behind it. I dove into any resource that I possibly could find. Uh, and I've got 20 pages of notes of uh, uh, documentation of where uh, this information came from. So it is not mm -hmm. just opinion. It is legitimately researched. And I had a ball doing it. Love history. Love Abraham Lincoln. And once I dove, dove into it, I just was amazed at how long it took me to gather 10 chapters full of similarities between Donald Trump and Abraham Lincoln. Well, I, I think that's amazing as well. Um, it's uh, you know, and of course with your um, with your pedigrees that nobody's going to argue with you in terms of whether or not it's been well researched or not. <laughs> uh, and I think some will challenge too. But I would guess that one would uh, uh, an observer would or someone reading the book would think about this person versus that person. We get two people to throw tomatoes at. You know, um, the way we are in America today, I could have two PhDs and all kinds of uh, credentials behind me, and there will be half a nation that wants to. You mentioned um, IDD, Integrity Deficit Disorder. There is so much disorder out there, right. and it has right. absolutely nothing to do with truth. Um, right. so, you know, I'm not worried about it. I, I know what's behind this. I know what's true. I know there are a lot of people out there who, who really appreciate knowing not only more about Abraham Lincoln, but what makes Donald Trump tick. And there's a lot more than just what he shows outwardly. And this book really reveals that, uh, man behind the myth, if you will. Sure. Sure. Now let's take about the two men. And in each of them, one of those uh, characteristics and, can, and compare them. Can you do that right now? Uh, well, I've, there are hundreds and hundreds of similarities. Um, I could start with what got me on this path of even thinking that Donald Trump was anything like Abraham Lincoln. I had taught Abraham Lincoln to school children for years as an right. educator um, he is my favorite president. I thought I knew a lot about him. Donald Trump came down that escalator 
And I wasn't unlike anybody else saying, oh, here's a celebrity who wants to be president. And, you know, we've had things like that before. But during the primary, something was so unusual about him. He spoke um, just ordinary language. It was something that was so new uh, during that time. Now, Donald Trump is kind of old hat, but it was brand new on the political stage. But coming to his election, I noticed some similarities. Abraham Lincoln also won with less than half the popular vote. He came to office with the first lady who was absolutely ridiculed and lambasted by the media and the press for what she wore, Mary Todd Lincoln. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, Melania Trump was absolutely, um, you couldn't find a mainstream media that was kind to her, uh, especially with whatever she wore. Um, and he had a, uh, both had 10 year old sons when they were elected and both are very tall. And I thought, really, there could be some similarities between these two. And that's where it all began. And I started digging and not just in their personality styles. Um, don't get me wrong. There are some major differences between Donald Trump and Abraham Lincoln. But mm -hmm. these 10 chapters in the book focus on the similarities, which are many. Um, once I started diving deep, I just kept finding things. And the book is very handily um, split into 10 chapters, and you can actually read each chapter separately. Um, their ancestries in one chapter, their families, family life, sure. Sure. Um, how they raised. So all of the 10 chapters can, can stand on their own, but those are the different categories of the similarities that I have put together. And the final chapter is signs of the times, how incredibly alike America today is to America, the divided America during the Civil War. Right. Gretchen, I uh, uh, have a habit of going through and making sure that somebody gives me the table of contents. And I go through that as much as I can with the time permits. And, um, and I see some of those things uh, for those. Um, I have had one that kind of jumped out at me. The uh, number six, chapter six, it says, keeping it real. What was what happened that was unreal? Well, what keeping it real is all about, of course, Abraham Lincoln is regarded as honest Abe. And the whole chapter is about how incredibly honest and real Donald Trump is and Abraham Lincoln and those similarities that make them real. Uh, it's not necessarily about just telling the truth all the time, but it's about being, and this, this has to do with, you know, what kind of person you are. Abraham Lincoln, absolutely. Uh, everybody who knew him, well, unless you want to talk to the Southern Confederacy, they were kind of like <laughs> half America. Today is to Donald Trump. Abraham Lincoln, in fact, burned the piles of hate mail as he received it in the White House. But anyway, one thing about Donald Trump and Abraham Lincoln is, and you can, you can think about this, people say, well, Donald Trump lies all the time. Well, that's not the point. Yes, he exaggerates. Abraham Lincoln did some of that himself. And I realize that. But one thing they are as not only as politicians, but as real people interacting with common Americans um, and their own families, what they said, what they did, and what they thought were all the same person. Abraham Lincoln, there was nothing two-faced about him, although when he was accused of being two-faced, he would make a joke and say, well, if I were two-faced, would I be wearing this one? He always did that, self-deprecating. Um, but whatever he, he did, whatever he thought, whatever he said, he actually believed those. It was all one person. It wasn't several. There was no duplicity about him. And the same is actually true of Donald Trump. In fact, one thing that so many Americans, and I appreciate it as well, is I don't have to wonder what he's thinking because it comes out his mouth. 
And some people say, well, that's not a, you know, he can't be a leader because he just says too much. There are honest Americans who believe that that is one thing that they love about Donald Trump is he is so honest because he says what he thinks and he actually believes what he says. So that's what keeping it real is all about, is the actual honesty of both of these men and presidents. Well, you know, we have the the Trump version of Lincoln and Trump coming up uh, here in the next, what, six months, year? Uh, On the next uh, election. Um, What do you think about him in this uh, election time? Do you have a a gut feel? Do you you roll the dice? Uh, How are you looking at it? Oh, for Donald Trump? Well, yes. it kind of all depends on uh, those that have TDS, which is, of course, Trump derangement syndrome. Those who have that, are they able to follow through with those things that would destroy any other normal politician in America? Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. have tried endlessly. Russia, Russia, Russia. They've tried Uh, lawsuits. They've tried um, all of these things that would take down any Republican candidate, but not Donald Trump. And that's one thing that is so incredibly unusual about him. Uh, If they cannot take him down with all of the normal shenanigans that they try, the lies that he's a racist, all of those things. um, you know, one thing Donald Trump does, and Abraham Lincoln did it too. Abraham Lincoln was was huge on the political stage. People loved to come and hear him because he was so, he was funny. Um, and he could entertain crowds, not just with those very practice speeches that we are familiar with, but there was a real man behind that myth as well. We know the Gettysburg Address. We know his first and second inaugurals. Those were very well-rehearsed, well-practiced speeches. Um, in person, he was he was very funny. Um, but Donald Trump, one thing he does, he sucks all the air out of the room. When Donald Trump is there, everybody else is a second rate candidate. And I have no doubt that those who want to come up against him in the primary, the Republican primary, um, will find that they will fall like dominoes as they did before. Um, Uh, Donald Trump is so adept and a lot of us think, well, he shouldn't be, you know, bad mouth in that person that's in his nature. And this book is about how Donald Trump has spent a lifetime learning how to fight and he does it. It's, and he's, he's what, 78 years old. He's not going to change. It's just a part of him. He comes out punching and he's absolutely the least prejudiced person you will ever come across because he doesn't care what color you are, what race you are, what gender you are. If you punch him, he's going to punch back. So he's very honest in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, And one thing is, is uh, I think the times in which we're living right now, in which there is so much dishonesty and censorship Mm -hmm. lies that we are, we're discovering through um, video that the January 6th, um, all of the stuff they told us about, it's not necessarily what is being shown in all this video footage that has come to light. Um, So yeah, Donald Trump is gonna, if they cannot take him down, which I wouldn't put it past something happening. I believe that um, Providence, has has as much to do with Donald Trump still being here as it did with Abraham Lincoln, um, making it through the Civil War and finally uh, finishing that. But of course, Lincoln was assassinated before uh, Reconstruction, before the end of the, before, you know, Reconstruction and all of that. Um, But I, I have no doubt that if the Republican Party can stay united, one thing about the Republican Party is they are a party of status quo. Um, They don't like to change. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, I always come from history. History is so incredibly 
telling and what we can learn from it. Teddy Roosevelt uh, won all the Republican primaries in 1912, and yet the party did not give him the nomination. They don't. He took them in a very progressive, uh, uh, it wasn't the big, big business and the big industrialists uh, direction. It was for the common man, for the worker. And the Republican Party decided, uh-uh, he rocked the boat a little too much. So they did not give him that nomination. We have a Republican Party that also has some entities. You can call them rhinos. You can call them uh, moderates. I would simply call them uh, just kind of stuck in a rut. Uh, if the Republican Party can follow and move in the direction that we need to move in, then I have no doubt Donald Trump will be the nominee. Um, I don't think there's anybody who can approach his level of being able to fight as well. So my bet's on Donald Trump. Uh, of course, it's a long ways before Election Day, and that's it a is. whole different discussion as well in what happens on our next election day right. or well, week or month. I'm looking at another item here, how Democrats have become experts at hijacking the Constitution of the United States. I'm not going to argue against that. Uh, even, even with a lean on the Constitution of the, of the U.S., but uh, where do you come from on that? And how do you come then as that? Well, I'll talk about a couple of things. First of all, I always go to Abraham Lincoln. Um, mm -hmm. Lincoln came back into politics. Um, he left it. He did a, a two-year term in the House of Representatives in D.C., and it didn't go well. He was disappointed, he, he left politics for a while, but what brought him back in was the Supreme Court Dred Scott decision. It's when the Supreme Court decided to say that, that because you are a black slave that you cannot be a citizen in this country and therefore you have no rights. And that's what brought Abraham Lincoln back into the political fray. And he's actually one of the few that stood up against uh, having a slave nation and not wanting to go in that direction. Right. But he, he said, you know, he, during the civil war, he also kind of used the constitution um, to his own benefit. He used war oh. powers in, in order to go above and around the constitution because of war times. Um <clears throat> So using the Constitution, is Liz Cheney is from our state, and we actually fired her. We hired yes. Harriet Hegeman in her place, and yes. we're discovering uh, the committee that she presided over uh, was full of misrepresentations and omissions and uh, completely lacking in integrity, and, and thank goodness we fired her. But in her concession speech, and I listened to the whole thing, but she compared herself to Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> and it, it was it was unusual, but one thing that, and she says she's a Republican, but she's she has nothing to do with those Republican principles that Wyoming wanted her mm -hmm. to stand for. Um, but she compared herself to Abraham Lincoln and, and she throws out that, well, I am fighting for the constitution. Well, that was the furthest thing that she was actually fighting for. The constitution is something that provides all of us with those simple basic rights. And it's actually very small. You can read it in, I don't know how many pages I have a little booklet and it's, it's very clear, it's very easy to understand, and it's only a few pages long. Um, if more people would just read the Constitution, but the one thing the Democrat Party does is we are fighting for the Constitution. Well, whoever their base is, and, and they want to promote this idea, they are not fighting for the Constitution. They're actually uh, just doing the opposite and it's it's unusual 
in the times right now. But whatever is happening in that Democrat Party is actually the opposite of what our Constitution says should be happening. Here's just one example. Um, Article 4, Section 4 says the national government, the president, will um, keep the states from being invaded and what is happening at our southern border and something in right. which they are right. so disingenuously saying, well, yeah. there's no invasion going on. Well, if they were to admit there was an invasion by illegal and having such a porous border, then they would be a absolutely breaking the constitution because sure. that is what our federal government is to keep states from being invaded and from domestic violence so uh they just throw it out and and it means nothing because yeah. it's not it's not true yeah they do what they want to do uh, without regards to what the rules are supposed to be everybody's supposed to follow them uh, i can't i don't can't remember that guy's name, but he's trying to um, get get here. And I, uh, 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 what's what's what sort of trying to get here? Um, can't remember the names. He's something with the security security border. He's the one that's always making the. Uh, um, moves and challenging people tell him there's a problem he says oh there's no problem um i can't t t take the guy's name anyway, i can't think running. either sorry <laughs> <laughs> he's they were, they were talking about uh, um getting rid of him the, the republicans are finding a lot of data in what he's done and uh they want to see him uh, to go and he, i think he's probably should Nevertheless, it's going to be Is good. Is that Adam Schiff? There's oh, quite no, a few people he, the Republicans want to get rid of. <laughs> that's right. No, he's never been a congressman. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, uh, it was amazing, though, how much uh, uh, Schiff did what he did and was still trying to continue with that. Um, I believe I heard there was something about he was trying to um run for for a senate seat in california uh i don't know um that's just you know, whether he will whether he won't he's a bad guy we know him as a bad guy yeah i think he wants to move to a house where he's has a little more um you know with with the the democrats and move into the right. senate he wants to be able to do the dishonest things he's been doing of course, now he's still in the House and he's not able to do them because thanks to Donald Trump, we have the House, you know, a, a narrow margin, but it is still Kevin McCarthy is our Republican Speaker of the House. So, right. yeah, he wants to leave so that he can do more um, of what he's already been doing, which is lying. And it is That's right. all of that Total lying. Talk, just look in yeah. your eye and tell you the lie. Gretchen Wollert, I'm ready for you to tell my audience where they can buy your book. It's an interesting, it's an intriguing book, that I'll call it. It absolutely is. And, and you will understand, you'll learn so many things about Abraham Lincoln and also Donald Trump that you never knew. Um, it's on Amazon, Born to Fight, Lincoln and Trump. It's also on my website, which is Gretchen Wollert, W O L L E R T dot com. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Terrific. Terrific. Um, actually, I, I went ahead and bought the, uh, the Audible. Yes, yeah. it is in, in, in audio book. It is also yeah. on Kindle version, so you can get any of them. You can I'll listen try. while you're driving down the road. <laughs> that's the way to do it or walk, walk in the dog you know we have a lot of distance here in wyoming so it's kind of important that we uh 
have something to listen to when we're driving those long distances uh, between exactly. towns and cities. Sure. I was, I lived most of my adult life in Texas. If you want to go somewhere, you're, you wasted a whole day. Yeah, there is a lot of space in Texas, too, where there's nothing. My, I have a sister that lives in Lubbock, Texas. Oh, that's, that's even worse. <laughs> Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> my, my grandson's trying to get into t Texas Tech, so that's not spreading any rumors. <laughs> oh, that's I'm a good so, It is. I'm, I'm so glad that you took the time to, to do this. It's um uh, you have a unique subject and a unique way of telling it. And probably more and more of this is going to come your way. That's how I would see it. So but thank you. Thank you for being in the chair and, and, uh, and telling all of what you've done today. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. Love history, especially the times we are in. It is critical that we learn from, from history. That's right. Exactly. Um, tuning in to my Searching for Integrity listeners so long and happy trails to all. Mm -hmm.